Hi guys, I wanted to talk about Harvest Home. Unfortunately, the library that I borrowed it from, they put a sticker on it, so it covers up a lot of the front. But this book is something that I got because I enjoyed the other, and this one is much more of a slow burn. It was written after the other. Uh, I don't think I'll be reading it again. I would read the other again. That one was so good. This one I'm kind of indifferent toward, and it felt predictable, and I don't know if that's because of uh, the tropes that have become commonplace now. I don't think they were that well known in the 70s maybe, and so this felt more shocking. But a family, Ned, Beth, and their daughter Kate, move to this idyllic, slow-paced country um, house where the entire town is tiny, very familiar with each other, everyone knows each other. It's kind of like a Mayberry situation, and they grow corn. They worship corn. They, like, everything revolves around corn and the harvest, and they're very, they're, they preserve the old way of doing things. They don't like modernization, which is exactly what Ned and Beth are looking for, having grown tired of the city. You know, the common, the common story of city folk who get disenfranchised and then they move to the country and then the country turns on them because they are not of the country. So Ned and Beth have made some friends, the town seems to have embraced them as long as they go along with the old customs and they are they are not trying to change the ways of the, the old town. There's a character in there called Jack Stump. He stumbles upon something bad and he gets his tongue cut out. There are some pagan elements, there's a corn goddess, the women are in charge. They basically have control over the fruitfulness of the crops to come. There is a whole bunch of like setting everything according to the season and the women are secretive and they oversee the fertility part and they have a ritual which is basically an orgy in the woods where the harvest lord who has been chosen and has reigned for seven years he gets slaughtered after impregnating one of the women in a a ritualistic sex scene and in this Ned has discovered all of this of course at the last minute you know right when it's gonna happen he's put all the pieces together he goes out to the to the area where it's supposed to happen, where no men are allowed, no men are allowed to see this. Bad things have happened in the past. His neighbor has no eyes in his eye sockets because he one time wanted to see. He went out there, he was discovered, and the women gouged his eyes out. Now it's 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 implied he didn't really explicitly tell Ned that that's what happened, but it he he pretty much said it even though he didn't exactly say it. And Ned still goes along because Ned's like, I won't get caught, you know? And he goes out there, he hides from the women, they go through this whole ritual, and there is a secret guest, and you're already starting to put the pieces together. It's either his wife or his child, one of the two. One of the women will be offered up to have sex with this uh, harvest lord. And it ends up being his wife, Beth, and then after he is forced, because the women discover him, after he's forced to watch this guy have sex with his wife, after he he's forced to watch this, the women, they descend on him. And not only do they gouge out his eyes, like what happened with his neighbor, but they also take out his tongue, like what they did with that Jack Stump guy. So he gets... He, oh my god, he just... The complete ruination of this man is just devastating. So he sits in the... and it, I thought it was predictable. I knew his eyes were coming out, and then I kind of suspected the tongue as well. I haven't found anywhere that says that he lost his tongue, but it says in this 
book, quote, I made no reply for I could not. It was as Robert had suggested. Some tragedies were unspeakable. I would never speak again. So he has no tongue. Like, that is fucked up. And he's still with his family. Like, Beth is now pregnant. This is how it gets left. Beth is pregnant with the corn lord baby. And there will be a new corn maiden and it's going to be his daughter. So eventually all of this is going to happen to his daughter. So I don't know why he's sticking around. I don't know why. I mean, maybe he's sticking around because he's helpless. He's no longer able to see and he was a painter and he can't talk. So, you know, what, what kind of a life is that going to be for him? I don't know. So it is, it was a good book. It's messed up, which is what I expected from a Thomas Tryon book, but I don't feel like it was as impactful as the other. I don't know, because I feel like the pace of the book and the not knowing exactly what was going on kind of matched the setting, the calm countryside, you know, people doing laid back things. It just, like everything matched and it's as it should be. I just don't feel the need to go through this and read it again. So I recommend reading it once. If you don't care to, you pretty much got the gist of it from the brief synopsis of what I told you. Ned goes around solving mysteries in a town where he shouldn't. Uh, he doesn't heed warnings from basically Jack and Robert. There's not much to it that I'm going to go into. You know, I don't need to go too far into it, but yep, that's it. Have a spooky day. I feel like there's more I should say about this book, but I just don't... I don't know, it's not... It's fine. It's a fine book. I'm glad I read it. I don't need to own it. 